Chapter 19 Eye Contact Bibi let out a discontent huff and bored groan from his place on his father's bed. His eyes were glued onto the far wall, idly tracing what few patterns were to be seen on the surface. The only sounds to reach his ears were the occasional muffled laughs of someone playing across the street near CHS, and the electrical humming of Eventide's computer against the wall. Bibi's ears twitched at every little sound, hoping for something to come along and chase away his boredom. Sadly, there was nothing, and right now he was all alone. He thought back on how he had wound up in this situation. He'd been playing with his favorite aunt in the air when Aventide had pulled him down and told him he was going to be alone for a little bit. Bibi had asked why, of course, and Aventide had goed on to explain to him that he had to take Buddha to the vet for a regular checkup. When Bibi asked about Fluttershy and whether or not she'd be coming by, he was disappointed to learn that she couldn't come over to babysit right now. School was in session over at CHS, and her lunch period was being eaten up by a project with some of her friends. He'd been promised that he would only be on his own for about 30 minutes, but for a small, active brain like his, it might as well have been 30 hours, or 30 years. He let out another long, quiet groan, his eyes flicking over to his aunt plushie next to him on the bed. He idly swatted at it a few times, then gave up and puffed out a breath. <sighs> I'm bored, he declared flatly. The laughter outside carried on for a while, and Bibi just continued to drown it out. He'd heard the sound plenty of times before, and had always been told it was just kids playing across the street. Freshmen or something at the school, Eventide had said. Not that Bibi really knew what the term freshman meant in this context. Did they smell like fresh flowers, but the flowers were men? A comparison put the odd image of a lot of Eventides rising up out of the soil like flowers. It was weird, to be sure. A loud thunk against the window snapped Bibi from his thoughts, and he sprang into the air with an alarmed yelp, his wings buzzing into life to keep him suspended. Looking over at the window, he saw a big blue ball rolling away from the house. Curious, he drifted closer to the window to get a better look, and pressed his face right up against the glass. The ball was looking a little saggy, like Bibi's first ant plush she had looked after he had played with it a lot. He squinted to see if he could pick out any other details. Huh? Suddenly, something ran in front of his field of vision, a blur of yellow and green and red. Bibi cried out in surprise, his wings falling out of sync. He fell back down onto the bed and landed with an oof. Grimacing, he straightened his posture and shook his head before looking up again. He went rigid someone was right outside the window. She was younger than Eventide, and even younger than Fluttershy. She had yellow skin, a few shades darker than Fluttershy's, and long, bouncy hair that was the color of healthy red apples. Her peach-colored eyes looked back at Bibi, wide open with shock, and her jaw hung open. One hand was clutched over her chest, which was covered in a bright green t-shirt. The two looked at each other for several long seconds. Then they both screamed. Bibi didn't wait to see what the person did. He immediately turned and dove off the bed, almost hyperventilating in panic. His hooves hit the floor harder than he had been expecting as, in his panic, he had forgotten to use his wings to ease his fall. He stumbled and fell forward onto his face with a grunt, and colors exploded across his vision. Still, he got back up and broke into a gallop out of the room and down into the basement. He shot down the stairs and under his bed, quivering uncontrollably and struggling to calm his frantic gasping. After a minute or two, he finally began to get his breathing under control. He lifted his ears up and listened carefully, hoping that he wouldn't hear anything. He heard a few knocks on the door and went stiff. Another minute passed, and the knocking came again. This repeated a few times before all fell utterly silent, leaving Bibi to wrap his mind around what had just happened. 
he swallowed heavily to force down the lump in his throat, and a strangled whimper wormed its way out as the reality of the situation dawned on him. Someone saw me, he whispered in horror, a whole new feeling welling up inside of him. Dread. He wasn't supposed to let anybody other than Buddha, Eventide, and Aunt Fluttershy see him. He was supposed to hide whenever someone came to the house. Eventide had told him that strangers were dangerous, and if any of them found out about him, he might be taken away and never see his father again. He whimpered, curling into a ball. <laughs> Daddy, please don't be mad. I didn't mean to. I don't want to be taken away. He mumbled to himself before going silent and awaiting Eventide's return. The wait felt even longer than it had before. Eventide had only half listened as the vet listed off a few minor concerns with Buddha's health, telling him that she was not getting quite enough food and that she was starting to lose more weight than was healthy. He passively absorbed that information while his thoughts remained firmly planted on his son. Bibi had never been left completely on his own before, but Eventide couldn't have rescheduled this appointment. He'd put it off more than a few times already, and the vets had been getting understandably concerned with him. Either way, he was given the instruction to feed Buddha more per meal before being sent home. Now they were walking back towards the house, Buddha tethered Eventide's hand by a lengthy, thick red leash. She sniffed at every little thing she came across on the way, happy to be outdoors again. Eventide glanced at her and managed to smile at her enthusiasm. Thinking about it, he had been neglecting to take her for as many walks as he used to ever since Bibi showed up. Maybe it was time to change that. He looked ahead as they came onto their block, and his brow furrowed with confusion. He saw Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo all watching him from in front of CHS. Apple Bloom had an expression that could only be described as apprehensive, while Scootaloo looked suspicious. Sweetie, however, was looking at those two with a skeptical frown on her face, as if she were impatient with them or that they were being silly. Haven't I gave them a stiff wave as he passed, putting on a friendly smile? The waves were returned, but were only half-hearted. Feeling a little creeped out by the kids just staring at him like he was the culprit of some heinous crime, he returned his attention to his home. A few moments later, he was stepping into the living room with Buddha looking eager to die for her food bowl. Haven't I unhooked her from the leash, and sure enough, she made a break for her dishes, quickly devouring what food was left in her bowl. Once it was gone, which only took a few seconds, she looked up at Eventide with pleading eyes, and he sighed and shrugged. Sorry, girl, you gotta wait. Buddha got the point and gave a disappointed whine before shuffling over to the chair and hopping up for some rest. He smiled at her in sympathy, then looked around the front room of the house. He raised an eyebrow in confusion when Bibi didn't immediately come rocketing from wherever he was napping to tackle hug him. That was odd. Huh. Bibi! He called out, but no answer came. Frowning, he stepped deeper into the home towards his bedroom. Bibi, where are you? I'm home! Again, there was no answer. Eventide felt his heart rate increase with concern, even as he tried to force himself to not jump to conclusions. Peering into his room, he found that Bibi was absent, albeit the blankets were a little messed up in the center, indicating that he had been napping there earlier. It looked a little more disturbed near the window, and Eventide frowned. Maybe he's downstairs, he mused, before stepping back into the hall and heading for the basement. He found the door standing ajar, and a sense of unease crept up his spine. Something was wrong. Bibi? He called again, his voice now lined with an edge of concern. He began his descent, noting that the light wasn't on. Hello? 
He paused halfway down the steps when a sound reached his ears, making his blood run cold. It was Bibi. Crying. It sounded like he was trying to keep it quiet, too, as opposed to his usual loud wails whenever he woke up from a nightmare. Eventide resumed his descent, moving slowly and carefully, not wanting to startle his son. Soon, he was in the bedroom proper and flicked on the overhead lights. The illumination revealed that, while Bibi was not on the bed, his cries were much clearer now. Following the sound, Eventide came to a stop by the bed. Taking a deep breath and bracing himself, he slowly and carefully got down onto his hands and knees and looked under. Sure enough, there was Bibi, or rather, there were Bibi's eyes, the blue orbs looking back at him as the only part of him that was clearly visible in the dark space. <laughs> Daddy? Bibi asked weakly before sniffling. Bibi? Eventide greeted in a soft, soothing tone while gingerly reaching out with a hand. Hey. Hey, what's wrong? Bibi inched forwards, and his face steadily grew more visible from the room's light. Eventide's heart plummeted when he saw the expression on his face. He wasn't just crying. He was terrified of something. He'd been crying in fear, not sadness. He hiccuped before finally reaching Eventide's hand and allowing himself to be guided out from under the bed. Eventide cradled him against his chest, turned and sat on the edge of the bed. He held Bibi close, giving him reassuring pats on the back of the head. What happened, B? What's wrong? Eventide asked again in a soft voice, starting to rock them back and forth. B.B. sniffled again before looking up at Eventide reluctantly. He tried to speak a few times, but every time his voice failed him. Clearing his throat, he tried again, this time with results. Hey, I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me. He pleaded in a whimper, reaching up with his hooves and curling them into the collar of Eventide's shirt. Eventide was taken aback by the desperation in his son's voice. He paused for a second, then squeezed him closer. Shh, 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 shh. hey, you're okay, B. You're all right. Shh. What do you mean? He asked softly, giving him another reassuring squeeze with his hands. It's okay. You can tell me. I won't get mad, I promise. Bibi hesitated then buried his face in Eventide's chest. He trembled for a moment before revealing what had caused him such distress. Someone saw me. He choked out. Eventide's muscles tensed, his eyes widening. As much as he would have loved to, he could not stop the sudden onrush of fear and dread that flooded his veins. Bibi must have felt the response because a pitiful wail slipped out of him. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm so sorry. Evan tied mouth like a fish for a few moments before snapping out of it and pulling Bibi closer, trying to comfort him. Hey, 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 shh, shh, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. I got you. He whispered, spending almost a minute just soothing Bibi until his cries simmered down. Once he was sure he was calm again, Evan Tide leaned back. You're okay. You're gonna be fine. Now, who saw you? Bibi hiccuped up again. <laughs> um, it, it was a girl with yellow skin and red hair. She, she was smaller than Fluttershy, and she was wearing a green shirt. He managed to say before looking up at Aventide's face. Daddy? Am I going to be taken away? No, Bibi, no. Eventide assured him, his face relaxing somewhat with recognition. He let out a long, heavy sigh of relief. <sighs> it's okay. You're fine. 
That was Apple Bloom. She's just a kid, and nobody believes the kid. Even if she tells anyone, they'll probably just think she's making up stories or something. You're gonna be fine, Bibi. Nobody's coming to take you away. Bibi must have felt his dad's relief, because his own expression lit up significantly. There was still an aura of fear and uncertainty about him, though. He swallowed the lump in his throat and asked, Promise? Eventide smiled and nodded. I promise. Bibi went to bed early that night, as his time panicking under his bed had worn him out mentally. Eventide tucked him in, read him a bedtime story, then went back upstairs. Now he sat at his computer desk, with a small plate with an even smaller dinner on the desk next to him. It was a basic meal, consisting of some boiled broccoli and a couple pieces of chicken meat. Nibbling on his food, he let his mind wander. B.B. had been spotted by Apple Bloom. The fact that he had been seen at all was a serious problem, and it had happened so suddenly. As he thought on it, it was a miracle that B.B. had gone undetected for this long. There was a full-blown high school across the street, after all. It was inevitable that someone would spot B.B. sooner or later. He figured they were lucky that it was Apple Bloom who made the discovery. As young as she was, nobody would believe her, except for maybe her friends. That would definitely explain why they were staring at him from across the street. <laughs> Evan Tide let out a humorless laugh as he pictured her telling her friends that she had seen some weird, creepy bug monster in the house across the street from the school. He could already see Scootaloo jumping on board the idea of trying to prove there was a monster, and Sweetie Belle having to keep them both in check from doing something totally stupid. His expression darkened when he considered the former two of the three friends. They were a very persistent and stubborn bunch, especially Apple Bloom. Even if the others gave up on finding BB again after a while, she'd still be keeping an eye on him for who knows how long, trying to catch another side of BB. Eventide let out a frustrated groan and dropped his fork so he could bury his face in his hands. He took a few deep breaths as he assessed the situation. They were starting to get dangerously low on money, which was causing Buddha to become low on food. And now that someone had seen him once, Bibi was at greater risk of discovery. Eventide sighed and ran his hands over his face before looking through the window at the night sky outside. After a few minutes of struggling with himself mentally... His expression hardened with a strange combination of resignation and resolve. <sighs> no more excuses, he said to himself in a whisper. We can't stay here. <laughs>